This screencast covers the material from Module 4, Lesson 30, where we are going to be dividing decimal dividends by non-unit decimal divisors. We're going to build upon what we learned yesterday. It's largely based upon the practice set, but I have uh, juxtaposed some homework word problems with some from the practice set to show you the similarities to help you get through them. Okay, uh, this builds on yesterday's in that we no longer have unit fractions in the divisor. So we're going to rewrite this division problem as a fraction. So I have 3 in 5 tenths, my dividend becomes my numerator, my divisor becomes my denominator. Now how many tenths do I have uh, here? I have 5 on uh, the uh, denominator. We're going to look here and we see that we have 5 tenths and I'd like to change that to a whole number. So if I have 5 tenths, if I multiply it by 10, I have one decimal place, so I need to multiply by 10. And whatever I do to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. So we'll continue. And 3 and 5 tenths times 10 is 35. And 5 tenths times 10 is 5. And we have a very familiar division problem here. It's a basic one. So 35 divided by 5 equals 7. Going on to the next problem, in this case we have hundredths here. So let's go and rewrite this as a fraction, 3 and 5 tenths, divided by 5 hundredths. Now how many hundredths do I have here? I have 5 hundredths. Uh, and I want to get rid of that decimal, so I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 100. So I have 3 and 5 tenths times 100, and I have 5 hundredths divided by 100. So now I multiply 3 and 5 tenths times 100. I get 350. And I multiply 5 tenths times 100, and I get 5. And how many 5s uh, in 350? Well, I know that there's 7 uh, fives in 35, so there must be 70 fives in 750. Moving right along. Now again, you can see that we had a pattern here. I had to multiply by 10 when I was had tenths, and I had to have to multiply by 100 when I have the hundredths. So rewriting is a fraction, 4 and 2 tenths over 7 tenths equals 4 and 2 tenths times 10 and 7 tenths times 10. I have 42 for my numerator and I have 7 for my denominator and 42 divided by 7 is 6. In this case I have 42 hundredths divided by 7 hundredths and since uh, this is in the hundredths I need to multiply by 100 so let's write it as a fraction 42 hundredths divided by 7 hundredths and that equals 42 hundredths times 100 over 7 tenths 7 hundredths times 100 and I end up with 42 sevenths and once again that equals 6. Just want to point out we always look at the denominator to figure out what we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by. C and E go to tenths, so I, I multiply by ten. D and F go to hundredths, so I have to multiply by a hundred. The key thing we want to do here is get rid of our decimals and by creating an equivalent fraction that allows us to do division facts as we customarily do them. Let's do just a couple more examples. Again, rewriting is a fraction. And we can see that our denominator goes to the tenths. So we're going to write 3 and 6 tenths times 10. And 1 and 2 tenths times 10. That gives us 36 for the numerator, 12 for the denominator. And 36 divided by 12 equals 3. The next problem is 36 hundredths divided by 12 hundredths. And again, we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator, this time by 100, because we, our denominator, or our divisor, is in the hundredths. 
So I have 36 hundredths times 100. And I have 12 hundredths times 100. Hundredth. And I get 36 divided by 12. Once again, that is 3. Okay, now just some word problems. Mr. Volok buys a 2 and 4 tenth kilograms of sugar for his bakery. If he pours 2 tenths of sugar into separate bags, how many bags of sugar can he make? So again, we're asking how many 2 tenths are in this. I'm going to just illustrate this briefly with a tape diagram. And we have 2 and 4 tenths as our whole. We want to know how many 2 tenths that we have. Uh, there's various ways to make these diagrams. This is uh, one of the ways I like to do it. I don't know how many, so I'm going to put a question mark right here. And each one of these is equal to 2 tenths. So how many 2 tenths in there? Well, that tells us that we're going to take our 2 and 4 tenths and divide it by 2 tenths to figure out how many 2 tenths there are. We're going to rewrite that as 2 and 4 tenths divided by 2 tenths, where 2 and 4 tenths is our numerator and 2 tenths is our denominator. As we have in previous problems, we'll look at that denominator. We see a 2. I'm going to erase that just so that there's no confusion. So we're going to multiply that times 10. And whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator. So now I have 24 divided by 2. And we know that that answer is 12. So we would make the statement he has 12 bags of sugar, or he can make 12 bags of sugar. Now, I want you to look at this one carefully, uh, because you can use the logic of this in the future to help you solve problems more easily. If he pours twice as much, 4 kilograms of sugar into separate bags, how many bags of sugar can he make? So each bag has twice as much sugar. We'll set this up as a problem. We have 2 and 4 tenths now divided by 4 tenths. We'll make them into fractions. And since we are... Uh, we have tenths in the denominator. We'll multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10. And we have 24 divided by 4, and that equals 6. Notice, when the divisor is twice as big, the quotient is half the size, given that we have the same dividend. So again, if we double the divisor, we have half the quotient if we have the same uh, dividend. You can use that reasoning in the future to save some time in solving some problems. Two wires. One 17 and 4 tenths meters long and one 7 and 5 tenths meters long were cut into pieces 3 tenths of a meter long. How many such pieces can be made from both wires? Let's start it with a tape diagram. We're going to put two wires together. We don't know the whole. We'll say that this one is 17 and 4 tenths, and the other is 7 and 5 tenths. And we don't know the whole. It should be clear that it shows us that we need to add. But once we add that, we're going to take whatever that, s that sum is, we're going to break it into equal parts of three-tenths of a meter. And I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to put, uh, put three-tenths here, and I'm going to put one, two, and three-tenths here. Ellipsis, another three-tenths, and I'll put a question mark here, just to contrast that with the other way that I drew the diagram of the previous problem. Both are correct, and both are fine. So what do we have to do? We have to find the sum the sum of these two numbers and then divide it by three tenths and find out how many three tenths we have in all. Let's do the math. So I can do it this way. I can first do this step, 17 and 4 tenths plus 7 and 5 tenths. Remember we line up our decimals when we add and subtract decimal numbers. I get a 9 14, regroup the 1, and I get 
24 and 9 tenths. So we're going to do it, take that 24 and 9 tenths, 24 and 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths. We can rewrite that as a fraction, 24 and 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths. We have tenths in the uh, denominator, which is also the divisor, so we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10. We now have 400 or 249 divided by 3. Let's take that, do the division. 249 divided by 3. 3 goes into 24 eight times. I subtract, multiply, then subtract. We get a zero, bring down the nine. Three goes into nine three times. So we get 83 pieces of wire. We could also write this as, a, as an expression all in one, uh, not that you have to, but I could say 24, or excuse me, 17 and 4 tenths plus 7 fifths. So I'd say the sum of 17 and 4 tenths plus 7 fifths divided by 3 tenths. That will come in handy in future lessons. Now I have uh, two problems here. I have uh, the top one, number 5, is from the practice set, and number 4 is a very similar problem. It has all the same steps as number 5 in the practice set. So I just want to relate these two problems so that I'll work one out for you and you can pretty much do the same thing, substituting different numbers. All right. Mr. Smith has 15 and 6 tenths pounds of oranges to pack for a shipment. He can ship 2 and 4 tenths pounds of oranges in large uh, a box and tw 1 and 2 tenths pounds in a small box. If he ships five large boxes, what is the minimum number of small boxes required to ship the rest of the oranges? All right. Well, we know that the hole is 15 and 6 tenths. And he's going to have five of the large boxes. Okay, these are all large. And each one of those is equal to 12 and 4 tenths. Now we have what's left it goes into the small boxes. And we know that those are one and two tenths. Didn't really leave myself enough room there, so we'll erase that. Okay, so we have one and two tenths. We don't know how many. Uh, one and two tenths. Uh, and we'll put a question mark down there and one here. So what do we have to do? Well, first we have to figure out how many pounds does he pack away in the large. Well, we have two and four tenths uh, times five. Multiply that out, and we get 12. So we have 12 pounds. Now, how many are left here? Well, if this is 12, and this becomes more or less a question mark, we need to subtract. So we're going to take 12 from 15 and 6 tenths. Remember, lining up our decimals. If we don't have a decimal in a whole number, we put it uh, to the right of the ones place. We'll subtract 6 minus 0 is 6 and put our decimal in there. 5 minus 2 is 3 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have 3 and 6 tenths. Well, we're going to break that down into how many 1 and 2 tenth pound boxes. 3 and 6 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths equals 3 and 6 tenths as a fraction, we're going to multiply. Looking at the denominator, we have tenths, so we'll multiply by ten. Three and six tenths times ten. And one and two tenths times ten equals thirty-six. Twelfths equals 
three. All right, and we, of course, we have to write our statement. So let's look at this uh, problem here from the homework. A restaurant small salt containers contains six tenths of an ounce of salt. Large shakers hold twice as much. Well, if it's twice as much, we have to take that and multiply it by two. The shakers are filled from a container that has 18 and six tenths ounces of salt. If eight large shakers are filled, how many small shakers can be filled with the remaining salt? Well, we're going to take this and make that our hole here. And we're going to find twice, two times, six-tenths. We're going to put that value in here, except instead of five, as we have here, we have eight. Okay, so we're going to then figure out how much salt is in these eight large containers by multiplying. And then we're going to find out, uh, after that, we're going to subtract the amount in the large shakers from the hole and we'll take the difference what's left and divide that by six tenths so again it's very similar to this pr uh, process here and we're going to again put our hole here as 18 and six tenths we're going to find twice that and now I might as well tell you it's one and two tenths that's not difficult and we're going to multiply that by not 5, but 8. We're going to take our product, subtract it from our whole, find the difference, and divide that difference by the 6 tenths.